Our final guest today is Ryan Howell. He's here to talk about Zico Oktoberfest. Yeah. Zico is a sponsor. They are. They're uh, new this year. Our title sponsor um, coming on board. They've actually been with Oktoberfest for a number of years, sponsoring the Zico Family Free Friday, where you could get in for free from, your whole family can get in for free from 11 to 4 every Friday. But this year they decided to join us in a much bigger way and become the title sponsor. But they are still doing Family Free Friday, so you can still get in 11 to 4, totally free, thanks to Zico. I got to tell you something. I'm gonna, I need to, to explain one thing to the folks at home. Ryan is a project manager for the River Parks Authority in Tulsa. My wife went up one side of me and down the other to go see the new lights on the bridge. Oh, yeah. Finally, one night, I said, okay, let's go see the lights. And went down there, and it was really nice. Very it's stunning. very nice. Yeah. Now, if you've got a new bridge, you've got nice lighting, what's that going to do for Oktoberfest traffic? Well, hopefully it'll give people more options to come down. So we really encourage people, because uh, we do not have parking on site. Uh, for the last few years, we haven't been able to park anybody on site, and we shuttle everybody in. Yeah. But great ways to get there are by bicycle or by walking. So if you live in Brookside or nearby, you can now use the river trails, come across the bridge down the West Bank. We actually have a bicycle uh, valet there right on the river You're trail. I'm me. not, yeah. Thanks to Spokehouse Bicycles, they, they will check your bike in and you can leave it there with them all festival and they'll check it back out and make sure you have a bicycle. Whatever churns your butter. Yeah, I, mean, I know. It's really great. So we love being able to provide multiple ways for people to get to Zico Oktoberfest. We know also. you got great beer. Yeah. But you also got great food. We do. I mean, if you're a big fan of German food, you know, we have a wonderful <laughs> selection. Yeah. We have a wonderful selection. So, you know, um, we have... Siggy's Sausages comes out the worst. The German American Society sets up a, a booth and they're selling all the potato salad and potato pancakes oh, and, man. And, and bratwurst you can handle. And so, I mean, we have something like 40 different food vendors out there, 100 different beers on tap. Wow. Um, it's, it's quite incredible culinary experience. Do they have to-go boxes? Yeah, I'm sure everybody, yeah. You can, Excellent. you can take your food out, but you can't take your beer no, out. No, not you the can, beer, we don't but have the to food. go beers. You know, if you want lunch for tomorrow, yeah, yeah, you definitely can take it with stock you. up. Who, whose idea was it to to essentially light the bridge? So that came part of the design team. Um, that when we were going through the process of uh, figuring out what how to make that the most stunning bridge it could be. Um, the design team proposed the LED lights that you see on it. And those LED lights, interesting fact, are programmable so that we can change the color of the lights, you know, depending on the season. So we can have Christmas theme or Fourth of July theme, um, uh, green for, you know, Irish festivals and all sorts of stuff. So um, it is quite stunning. And you can actually, we can program it so that it's interactive so that it like is moving lights and not You're just kidding. a steady gaze, yeah. So that's that's really very nice. Yeah, you know, we'll be able to change the look of that bridge regularly. This stretch of the Arkansas River from here up past Sand Springs has a lot of historical significance. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Stan Wadey's troops came across the river, and the tracks are still in the rock back from back when it was mud. Yeah. Uh, and folks can go up there and see it anytime they want to. But we had Confederate troops come through. We had, we had well, in fact, we had both sides. Mm -hmm. They come through one way and come through another way. Yeah. And then now we've got Oktoberfest. Yeah. I mean, man, the river's getting a lot of play. It really is. And now that we have, you know, our new zinc dam in place and the lake is going to oh, yeah. be um, able to be activated more than it ever has before in the past, I mean, if people have been down to Austin and seen Lady Bird Lake, or not, yeah, Lady Bird Lake in Austin, and they've seen people out there rowing and kayaking and paddleboarding and, and engaging with the lake on a daily basis, that's coming to Tulsa. And so, I mean, it's here now, and it's just a wonderful resource that we're able to tap into. Well, while I'm on it, what are the hours for, or there may not be any specific hours, but I'll ask the dumb question anyway, what are the hours for uh, kayaking in that one area where the spillway is? Oh, so those are, uh, it, it is open from 9 a.m. to dusk every single day. 
unless we are closed for maintenance. And we recommend people check them out, the social media pages for the Tulsa Wave Park or Zinc Park or River Parks for those updates, because we do have to close it occasionally. To um, the, There's actually gates inside that that move up and down, and we just need to you know maintain them every once in a while, so we have to temporarily close down. Go out and but, get a little debris out. Yeah, every once in a while, debris floats down in there. We have to clean it down. So. Can people fish off that bridge? Uh, no, you cannot. Okay. Yeah. You can fish uh, underneath the dam, like far away from it, or you can fish in the lake, uh, but you can't fish off of the bridge. Off of the bridge. Yeah, I we, wondered, it It looks so clean and neat, man. I thought yeah. they wouldn't dare. <laughs> no, no, but the fishermen have found really good fishing below the dam. Any idea how old our Oktoberfest is here? This is our 45th year of Tulsa wow. Oktoberfest. Yeah, we started back in 1979, and it's our 45th year of operation. So, Still growing. Yeah, it is. It is growing every year. Every year we try to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit better. And this year, oh, you just put a, a show up of one of the tents, or that's the Glockenspiel. Um, but one of our tents this year is the beer garden tent. And right now in America, it is the largest freestanding tent. You're kidding. Mm -mm. It is the largest tent in America right now, and it'll be at Tulsa's Oktoberfest. I got to come see that. Yeah, it is. That tent right there, that, that's that screenshot. It is like 250 feet by like 250 feet. It is, it is like four football fields of a tent. Man could hold a real serious revival in that thing too, couldn't he? <laughs> we sure could. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna play polka music yeah. instead. <laughs> have have a beer and, and get next to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> sure will. Hey, thanks for coming by. That's and been wonderful. I love the leader host. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And we encourage everybody that comes out to Tulsa Oktoberfest to grab some Trocton, the traditional Lederhosen or the Dirndl. Uh, we'll sell it on site this year so you can pick up a, a costume and, and get involved in the festivities. Really? Yeah. What's, what's typical for women? It's called a Dirndl, and it's uh, you know, a, a, a dress that usually goes down uh, to below the knees. Um, some of the Halloween costume ones are a little shorter, but <laughs> the Dirndls are, are a more traditional dress for Thanks for coming by. Yeah. I'll be out hitting on that potato salad, partner. Yeah, you bet. Woo! Anyway, thank you. That's all the time we have for this get-together. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here next time.